And this is eighth grade science at Brooklyn Middle School. And this is my six period block. And today we are going to talk about graphing independent and de dependent variables. All right, so everybody should have their notes out. We are on page 10. If you're not finished, you finish up while I finish talking. Okay, so graphing, it's nothing new. We are going to just look at line graphs and bar graphs today. So you guys have been going outside and doing extra credit looking at graphs. But today you're going to make graphs. And I think we have trouble, it's easy to read them, but sometimes it's hard to create them. So today we're going to create line and bar graphs. The good news is you're going to do it together. So just a couple of reviews. Remember, line graphs are always distance, or excuse me, line graphs always show a change over time. And then a bar graph compares two things. So when you are creating your graphs today, one of the things you want to remember is always give it a title. What would the title tell you about a graph? Parts of the graph. What? Parts of the graph. It will tell you parts of the graph when we label it, but what about the title, like the title of a book? What does it tell you? Yeah. It's going to tell you like what this graph is about. Yeah, what the graph is about. So what is the main graph about? So the title is going to give you a clue so you know what you're looking at. So you definitely want to make sure that you um, write a title that has something to do with your um, graph. Then we have our x and y axis. And I even drew the pictures on here in case you get confused, but you should know this from math class. Remember, y is up and down, x is across. One way to remember is y to the sky. So everybody make your y to the sky, up and down and then x. Because it's easy to get it confused. So y to the sky, that's Ms. Heeson saying. And I like to use that one. And then the last thing we want to talk about is what are those x and y variables mean in science? So we talked about independent and dependent variables. Who can tell me what is the independent variable? Mikey. Something that changes. Something that who changes? Does it change on its own or does the scientist change it? Scientist. The scientist changes it. Remember, I for independent, I change it. Well, the independent variable is going to be on your x-axis, so on the bottom. The scientist is going to change your independent variable, and it's always going to be plotted on the bottom. So the dependent variable is what we, what? What do we do with the dependent variable? changes because of you. Right. What changes because of us. What depends on our, what we did, this is going to depend on it. This is the variable that we're going to measure. So that's always going to be on your y-axis. One way you can keep this straight is we have this phrase, dry mix. Okay. So remember when we talked about King Henry, how you write that on a piece of paper when you're taking a test to help you? Dry mix is another thing that can help you. If you can remember the phrase dry mix, if you ever make pancakes, you take it out of the box, it's that dry powder and you add the water, right? It's a dry mix when you make pancakes. But dry mix will give you the phrase to help you keep your variables and your axis correct. So dry, the dependent variable, it responds, is what we measure, and it is on the y-axis, okay? D-R-Y. So you always want to keep those pieces together. And then mix, is manipulated, independent, and x-axis. What does the word manipulated mean? Yes? What? Mess with? Mess with? Yeah, absolutely. It's the thing that you're going to control. If you manipulate something, you've controlled it. So that's what the independent variable is. It is the thing the scientist controls. So if you can remember dry mix, you will keep the correct variables on the correct axis. All right, any questions? All right, in front of you on your table, you have two little data charts. If you look in the middle of your desk, you are going to glue those on the left side of your notebook quickly. And when I want you to glue it, I want it to be on the edge of none. I didn't give you any. What? Glue it on the edge of page nine of your notebook. So it will look. Something like this, just on the edge. 
Because what you're going to do is after we do a group graph, you're going to sketch those graphs in your notebook so you have a point of reference later. Okay, so quickly glue it in on the left so you have space nearby. And then we're going to get started. data chart. Start looking at the information on there because I'm going to ask you some questions about it. Does anyone not have the notes? Can I, everybody good on the notes? All right, so let's look at the data chart. What is the very top data chart talking about? I want to make sure everybody's looking at the correct one. The average amount of rain. The average amount of rain. Okay, so here's what I want to do. In front of you, you have a pre-designed data chart. Should it go like this? Should it go like this? Tell me where I to stop. What? How should my graph be? Like this? Okay, so what I'm going to suggest is that you stand up at your table so that everybody can be on one side of the table. Otherwise, you're going to have to create a graph upside down. And then look inside your Ziploc bag. Inside your Ziploc bag, you will find different labels. So I want you to put the title, the X, and the Y variables where you need them on your graph. Where should you put those pieces? All right, gentlemen, let's go. Oh, the sock is your, the socks are your erasers. They're not dirty. They're just, probably have holes that are no match to them. I see some people still working. I see some people not starting. Come on. Look at your variables and your X and Y. See your X and Y's. Check yourself. Make sure you have your phrase dry mix correct. You might need to rearrange your labels. Everybody got dependent and Y on the, on the uh, up and down? Yeah. Because dry, D-R-Y, and then mix, M-I-X on the bottom. Everybody good with that? And you should have a title, which we haven't labeled yet, at the top. So what I want you to do, I want you to take a few minutes to decide what is going to go as your title. Go ahead and write it in. And if you don't have, do you all have a marker? You're going to write yourself a title for your first data chart. And then you are going to decide what are you going to plot on the left and what are you going to plot on the x-axis. Okay, what do you think your first title should be? I'm going to make it. But look, here's your data chart. Based on your data chart, what will your title be? Average. Write it on there. We'll see what everybody comes up with. It's months. We're doing months. Months. Are you doing months? Yep. The whole chart is about months? Nope. Okay. Nope. Looking at this, average what? The average. Okay. That's what I write. Over there. No, we're doing the top one first. Just the top one. No, that's ugly. What are they going on? What is your title going to be? Have you decided? What is this? Average what? Write it down. Somebody write it for your group. Guys, it doesn't have to be perfectly written. We're not going to stress out over how nicely this is written. Is it dried up? It's fine. I thought it was going to be all right, raise your hand if you can tell me what is your title for your chart, Bo? Average rain. Average rain. Okay, that'll work. Anybody have anything totally different from that? Everybody good with average rain or average rainfall? All right, so what are we going to be looking at? What two things on our X and our Y axis? What are we going to plot? Months and rain. What are we measuring? The rainfall. So is that going to go on the X or the Y? 
the no. y-axis, exactly. The measuring of the rainfall will go on the y because that is the dependent variable. So what do we have to figure out on the bottom? How many months are we going to plot? Five. five months. So go ahead and create the bottom x-axis with your five months. Remember, use your whole chart. You don't want a teeny tiny little thing. Look at this, guys. Look how quick I did that. This is the right part. Tahima here. How can you calculate, as a group, how to set up your markers? See what you get to try it, and you want to use as much of your graph as possible. So how are you going to set up the left-hand y-axis? You have to get from zero to 100 and probably about 80. So how are you going to set it up? We got to do numbers. Right, but what numbers? You have to keep them even, each line. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, that is 110. Okay, so if you did 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, that wouldn't be enough. We'll try it. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Not enough. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Not enough. Try wait, it again. Wait, wait, wait. What are we going to? You got to keep it. No, what are we going to? 180. No, we got to do That's a lot. How about 20, 20, 20? What y'all go by? 20? Nice. Nice. Good job. All right. What are you if you've made it and you have your data, go ahead and create your bar graph. Go ahead and set your bar graph up. Okay, you, no, okay, you cannot jump by random numbers. Each of these have to be the same. Like if you said 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So how can you get from 0 all the way up to 180? What do you think you need to jump by? Take a guess. I mean, you can try it. If you said 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, that's not going to be enough. So what's another? 20, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 180. That would work. There you go. All right, start creating your bar graph. Take your data. Okay. All right, one thing I want to be, excuse me. One thing, it is 110. It's hard to read on your data chart. It's not 10, it's 110 when you see that one piece of data. All right, start plotting your data. Make sure you label your months and plot your data. Yes, ma'am. 110. It's 110. It is. All right, once you are finished, I'm going to see if I can have a volunteer put theirs up on the board for me. Wait, what is that for? March is 53. Yes. Oh, look. Yeah. No, 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 leave it, leave it. Oh, June 68. No, 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 right here. Good job. How are we doing? Yeah, you can leave space. They don't have to touch. They don't have to touch. That won't matter. All right, keep going. All right, you should be making your bars. I just said, I just made the announcement. It's 110. All right, come on, let's go. Easy on my markers, please. Don't push too hard. That's the July 93. It's a bar graph because are we changing over time? Even though those are months, we're really just looking. We're doing bar graph because we're looking at each category. It won't matter. It won't make a difference. You're still set up right. Look at your data chart, and you guys haven't drawn in all the bars. Table one or table three. You haven't drawn in all the bars, but I see your dot dots for your data. Do these graphs look exactly the same? What are some differences? One's red, one's blue, one's colored in, one's not. But are they telling you the same information? Yeah. What month had the most rainfall? April. April. What had the least amount of rainfall? March. March. So that is why we can use a data chart to tell you a lot of information instead of gathering all these numbers. This is a quick way to learn about something. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Go Cubs! Go Cubs.